The very first set of numbers that you're likely to come across in a set of company accounts is generally referred to as the cash flow statement. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about what that cash flow statement actually is and how you can get some basic stories from that, whether it's about making or losing money, the cost of goods, tax or other issues as well. I'll talk about some of the key jargon involved that you might come across in a cash flow statement, such as turnover or revenue or different types of profit. Now, the cash flow statement is sometimes called different things, but you can normally see it in the contents page of a set of company accounts with a name like statement of cash flows or income statement or statement of income and retained earnings. But as I said, it's probably going to be the first set of numbers you come across if you scroll past all the text. In very large companies, you might find it um, way towards the back of what's a very, very large annual report. In fact, this is um, more than just the annual accounts. This is a whole kind of brochure aimed at investors, um, people who have shares in that company. This is an example from the high street food store, Greg's. Um, you can see that the strategic report lasts for um, dozens of pages and the director's report fills dozens more. It's only after about 100 pages that you actually get to the accounts and in there, the first set of numbers is the consolidated statement of comprehensive income. So you're looking for words like statement, income, cash, but also the very first set of numbers that looks like what I'm about to show you. Now, the other thing to mention is that in very small companies, you won't get a cash flow statement at all. You'll get a very short contents page like this that has the report from the accountants and a balance sheet. The balance sheet is basically assets and debts. And that's a separate thing to the cash flow statement that we're going to look at here. So this is what a cash flow statement looks like. This is what you should be looking for in the accounts. And like I said, this is the first set of numbers you will normally encounter. You should find that this has a column for the latest year that the accounts cover, as well as a com column for the previous year. And at the top, you have turnover or revenue coming in to the account, followed by lines such as cost of sales, gross profit and other types of profit, taxation, and then income at the bottom. And I'm going to work through those in this presentation. Now, a first thing to point out is that that first row can be either turnover or revenue. There are differences between those, but um, it's not really particularly important for our purposes. You can read more about it here, but for our purposes, what we're talking about is basically money that comes in at the start that's being used to calculate the company's profit or loss. Here then is a simplified version of that um, statement that I just showed you. What you can see in a cash flow statement is money coming in at the top and then essentially being um, subtracted from or added to as you go down. So in this example, we start with 30 million of turnover. That's money coming into the company. That's the, the business that the company is doing. We then have to subtract the cost of making things, delivering the services that this company um, is making or delivering. And that's normally expressed as a negative in brackets. In company accounts, a set of figures in brackets indicates money that is being taken away in the calculation. So in this case, 30 million minus 4 million gives us our first subtotal, which is gross profit. You'll notice that gross profit is in capitals and that capitalization or sometimes making something bold is a good indication that a number is a subtotal. And you can work it out by looking at the numbers above and seeing if they um, total 
the amount that you can see underneath. So 30 minus 4 million gives us a subtotal of 26 million. Gross profit is essentially the profit that that company makes after the cost of sales is taken away, but before other expenses, which we're going to come on to. The first of those expenses then is administrative expenses. Here again, we have a figure taken away and that gives us what's called the operating profit. So 26 million minus 1 million is 25 million. And then we might have some small amounts of income from other uh, parts of the business that aren't kind of the major business that we see at the top. And eventually we end up with profit before tax. Then we get the tax. Now this, um, I guess, should be a negative figure, but isn't always. Um, sometimes a company will actually have a positive figure here. For example, it might have paid too much tax the previous year and is getting a tax uh, rebate or refund, essentially, in the current year. But in this case, our profit before tax was 25 million. We take away tax of 5 million, which leaves us with a profit for the year of 20 million. There may be some other lines, other income, other expenditure. Um, again, generally small amounts uh, next. If there is any of those, then we finally have a line right at the bottom, which is the total income, what's left after um, all the costs and expenses and tax has been taken out of the turnover that came into the business right at the top. So after all of this money is taken away and also a few bits of income added, 100,000 here, 30,000 here, then this 30 million pounds of business ends up in 20 million pounds of income. Now each of these um, lines is also a potential story. So how much business that a company is doing might be a story. How much it's costing them to do business might be a story. Obviously profit is a story, tax is a story, and income is a story as well. You might look at different lines of, um, of profit to tell different stories. Gross profit, for example, is quite often used because it's not distorted by admin expenses. Admin expenses are basically costs that are unrelated to the core business. A, a classic example would be a licensing fee to a parent company. So each of these lines you can see could be potential stories. Profits going down or up, um, paying too much or too little tax, doing more or less business, the costs going up or down, um, and so on. There might be curious sidelines that they're making income from as well. Now for each of these, you can take the um, current year's amount and take away the previous year's amount to calculate a change. You can also divide that change by the previous year's amount to give yourself a percentage change. And that allows you to tell a story about how much something is changing in that business, whether the business has increased or decreased by a certain proportion or the amount of tax that they're paying has increased or decreased. Now, Companies House is a particularly useful place to find these accounts, but you can also search beyond Companies House for some of the larger companies. That example that I showed earlier of Greg's, for example, if you see a large um, piece of uh, an annual report like that, it's worth searching for it on the internet more generally because you might find a version which is not a scanned version. It might be the original searchable PDF and this will make it easier and quicker to find things in it. Here, for example, you can see a search for the Carillion annual report um, and I've added file type colon PDF to my Google search. There's no space in there, it's just file type colon PDF and that helps me to find the annual reports um, uh, an annual report elsewhere. On the left, you can see the version on Companies House, it's black and white, it's scanned. On the right is the version that I found by searching online. This is in full colour and it's searchable. 
Another tip if you're looking to find stories in accounts is um, to look for accounts that are actually published already in spreadsheets as data. NHS trusts, for example, publish their accounts online as spreadsheets, as do schools and academies and different government departments. Um, the fact that they're already in spreadsheets means it's easier for you to make calculations, to compare different organisations with each other, and often there is a much more detailed breakdown of what the money has been spent on and where the money is coming from. So that's my guide to the cash flow statement. Um, key points to remember from this. Um, the first is that this statement can tell you stories about making or losing money, um, costs, profits, things like that. The cash flow statement begins with turnover or revenue. And this is how much money is going through the company before it starts to spend anything. It's also a good indication of how much business the company is doing. Remember, a company can be doing lots of business and still losing money. And equally, it can be doing very little money, uh, very little business, sorry, and still making a decent uh, living. So the amount of business a company does is not necessarily related to how much profit it's making. And remember that there are different types of profit, um, gross profit, operating profit, things like that. Um, but you can follow the money being moved down through the company, being added to and subtracted to as you move down the statement. Look at examples of stories based on company accounts to see which types of profit they use in order to tell a story about that company.